Always answer up. your phone. Always up early every day. Answer your phone. Answer your phone and say yes. That's the other thing. If you want an opportunity, learn how to say the word yes. Here, here, here's. I don't know when they started asking guys. I do not know when that. I was there for when that happened. I used to deal uh, with Joe Silva when I was at the UFC, exclusively Joe Silva. And the way that worked is he'd tell you who your next opponent was. And yet you sit around after your fight and, and wait until you got that call and find out when your next date and who your next opponent was. I like that system. Somewhere over time, uh, I started dealing with Dana directly, and Dana would call and ask me, will you fight this guy? And I, for the longest, I scratched my head going, will I? Will I fight a guy? Who cares what I think? I'm under contract. I want to fight. Just give me a fight. And, and it was pretty cool, you know, that it turned that way, but I never understood why it did. If I got you under contract, I'll call and let you know when you're dating your opponent is. But, again, that comes back in, in the amateurs. You know, when you're when you're an amateur, you take on anybody else that shows up that day and says that, that he should be able to, to win the tournament. You take them all on. No matter where you are in the bracket, yeah. you wrestle. Yeah, Coker's treated me that same way. Hey, Chad, what do you think about that? What do I think about it? Who cares what I think about it? I'm under contract. That's what I think. I think I'm under contract and I have a job to do. That's what I think. But I, I do find it very nice, but I don't know where that came from. I mean, we keep hearing these fighters' opinion on who they should be fighting and who's next. I don't know when the sport got to that. You're in contract. Here's your division. I'll give you the, the, the date and I'll give you your opponent. That's the way it used to work. And that's when we had the good old days, when we didn't have all this bitching and complaining. Somebody calls you. You have a job to do. You're a plumber. You go do that job. And there's some jobs are harder than other jobs. But that's what our fans do. Our fans get up and they go and do the job. And some days are harder than others, but they do it anyway. They don't pick and choose and say, I don't feel good. Or, it, that's just not real life. And it's off-putting uh, when guys come out and they, and they say such things. Uh, you know, I, here I am, born with a fantastic body, born with great DNA, learned a fantastic skill, right, if you're Jacques Array. Learned a fantastic you were skill. About me. Was given an opportunity, an opportunity. You're not entitled to do professional sports. This is an opportunity that's largely chosen by God. You were born uh, into a certain field. You, you 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 were so fortunate that your body is healthy and you feel good. There's some people that don't even have. I've got a cousin in a wheelchair. He doesn't even have this opportunity. They're born with this fantastic opportunity to carry sports on into their adult life and find a way to not only get exposure, to stay in shape, be part of something great, uh, and get money for it at the end of all that. And you're going to say no ever, 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 or say, hey, this opportunity isn't good enough. I need the main event, or say this opportunity isn't good enough. I need more money, or say this opportunity isn't good enough. I need a title shot. That's bratty. That is a bratty, ungrateful mindset. I just don't know where it came from. And it's all over the sport right now. We hear guys complaining about money left, right, and center. And it's like, guys, everybody wants more money, man. The fans haven't come out yet and said, we want tickets to be cheaper. The fans haven't done that yet. Whatever the bill is, they pay it. And they pack the buildings. And you're going to come out and just like, this isn't all about you. This is not all about you and you running away with the pot and you getting everything that you want. There's a lot of work involved. There's a lot of climbing involved. There's a lot of being a team player involved, taking matches on times that are not opportune for you against opponents that are not opportune for you. But when the phone rings, you say yes. You go out and you do the job. You plumb the hard jobs. You build the hard houses. You teach the hard classes. You treat the sick patients. Whatever field you're in, you're in. You say yes, and you move forward, and you do the best you can. And however that ends up, it ends up. But you do the best that you can. That's what life is about. And I don't see enough guys doing that, and I find it very off-putting. I really do. You know what a mark I am for Tony Fricklin. You know how I've been singing Tony's praises before. Thank you. I've been singing the Big Ferg's praises before the Big Ferg. Haven't I? I've done that privately to you and on this show before he was a star because of what I saw him do in the practice room. Absolutely. I do not want to see Ferg fall into the trap of being one of these guys that's demanding certain amounts of money, demanding certain placements on the card, demanding certain opponents. I do not because he's better than that. Ferg is old school. 
Ferg fights. I've seen it with my own eyes, some things that he's done for no money and no attention in the practice room. I want to tell you these stories so bad, but I can't. I want to tell you who I watched Ferg go through on a daily basis for nothing other than he was a hungry guy trying to get his opportunity, but I can't. I can't share those stories. I do not want him to fall into this trap that I see him slipping towards into trying to make demands. He needs to dance with the one that brought him, and the one that brought him is being an old-school guy that wants an opportunity and nothing else. Just keep doing what you're doing. Kind of like when uh, you fought Mark Hart. Do you remember what Dana said to you after the match? Yeah. You want to th- Tell the story. Well, the, the only part I know is he said, kid, you keep doing that, you're going to make all sorts of money. Yeah. Yeah, and, and he also uh, had my name wrong. Call for a Kale. long time. For a long time he did. Yeah. Kale Sonnen. Kale Sonnen. Didn't even know what my name was. But you take those opportunities, and you move forward as best that you can. And then and then you look back, and if you can control your career, I got nothing against a guy doing that. But when you're being off-putting, when, when all these guys are singing the same old song, you know, I, I mean, for the longest time we had to hear about the money fight. Th- there's no such thing. There is no such division. There is no such thing as the money fight. There's no such category as the money fight. We had to hear about that every day from every fighter. They're all beating the same drum. It's like, man, this is so incredibly off-putting. It just is. Because here's the reality. The best guy will step forward every single time. Every Olympic Games, the best guy steps forward. Every NCAA, the best guy steps forward every single time. So if we did the opposite, Joel, instead of having more money in the money fight, if we took money out of this completely, there is no money. You are now going to operate like an NCAA athlete or like an Olympic athlete. The best guy will step forward every single time. If there was no money, John Jones still fights. Every time, if there was no money, we still all know who George St. Pierre is. The best guy will come for it every time. And the better you treat these guys, the more they want. And it never ends. And it's off-putting. If a guy wants to do that behind the scenes and he has these thoughts, man, he needs to keep some of those to himself. Because our fan that drives this forward doesn't get to do that. Do you know who I'm rooting for right now? No. And I've asked you to get him on the show, and I hope you get him on the show soon. Joe Daddy Stevenson. He's he's in the oh, the veterans ultimate fighter. I am rooting for you, Joe. I hope Joe gets you on the show soon. Maybe tomorrow. We get Joe on right now. Let's get him on tomorrow. I, I didn't know you were a Joe Mark. I've been telling you. Let's get Joe on. He 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 uh, he does this show called Kingdom an MMA show. I want to ask him a bunch of questions about it. Yeah, okay, that's cool. I mean, that's done. That's no problem at all. But wh- wh- where, where does this go? This is nice. This is refreshing well, my to me. Point, I just my didn't point, know that. My point what do you is love it, about Joe so much? Well, he started fighting when he was 17 or maybe even 16. He made it to the very top. He's got like 50 fights. And now here he is, a guy that's been out of the game for a while. You want to talk about opportunity. They gave him an opportunity to come back and do this reality show so he can get back into the UFC. They're not paying those guys. He's doing it for free, like he did when he started. Yeah, sure. And, you know, the thing that hurt Joe, uh, and it's hurt a lot of fighters, is Las Vegas. And a lot of fighters have succeeded out there, but a lot of fighters have seen the temptations and the distractions and not spent enough time in the gym. And I'm not speaking out of school here. Joe's talked about this, but that did hurt him. He moved out to Vegas to be at one of these superstar gyms with the superstar coaches and the superstar teammates. But he found out there's a lot of things to do in Vegas 24 hours a day. And uh, it is, I will agree with you completely. Uh, it'd be really cool to see Joe win that. I don't know the full lineup, so I, I don't know who I'm pulling for, but I do like that. And I do love a guy like Joe that saw an opportunity. And when his phone rang, he said yes. Answer your phone. And, see, well, and say yes. It's the only answer is yes. I don't know when it became a question. At some point it became a question, will you fight this guy on this time? I don't know where that dialogue came from. Hey, Jacques Array, you're fighting next Saturday. Our travel department will be in touch, and it's at 185, so get your running shoes on if you're overweight. That's the way it should work. And that would sum up all of these problems and, and do away with it. I remember how many people were upset when I got an opportunity against John Jones. I fully knew I was not the number one contender in that division. I'm well aware I'm not the number one contender in that division because I'm not even in the division. It's a different division. I've got to go up 20 pounds. I fully understood it. But when my phone rang and I was the eighth guy called, when my did you know that, Joe? They had called seven other guys before they finally called me. But do you want to know I got the fight? I said, said yes. yes. I said yes. 
my phone rang, and I said yes. That's it. We said yes at the same time. Welcome Jinx, to America. To you got to say yes. If you want an opportunity and an opportunity comes, you got to say yes. Chano, stay off the cage. I love that you made that point. That's I'm rack- true. I'm racking my brain at some, some, some crazy billionaires out there, and you're right. He is the richest guy that would agree for that job, and he will do that job better than anyone. Shane O'Mac gets it. I don't think. I think the number two guy would be Dana, and I don't think Dana takes that bump. Dana might be crazy enough to do it. I I don't, I don't know though because he didn't jump off the Mandalay Bay. I mean, right? Now, I know he said that a little a little offhanded. I don't know that he meant it, but he 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 does owe us a jump, doesn't he? I don't want to see. Anybody. What's the one that you can jump off? Because of you did. Is it stratosphere? stratosphere? Because he didn't agree to go to stratosphere, where, where they ha- where they actually have that, where you can do that. This was Manly Bay, so I don't even know how he thought he was going to get to the roof of it. I don't know how he thought he was going to to, to ever do that. But I don't I don't know if he's crazy enough to jump off that cage, man. I'm not a billionaire, and I'm not jumping off that cage for the billion. I'm scared of heights. Couldn't do it if I wanted to. Yeah, could I don't like could it not crawl up there and jump off if I wanted to.